my name is Deanne, and I am here to read to you one of my very favorite books. This is called Showdown Alpha Animals. I hope you enjoy it. Let me share my screen so that you can see it too. And let's get started. So here you see alpha animals. Let's take a look. I always do like to take a look at the table of contents to see if I have an idea of what we might learn about. So we're gonna learn about pack animals and what that means if they're better together. A jungle joust, a doggy dog world, I wonder if that's a play on words, a run the roost and stronger together. Let's find out about alpha animals. Pack animals, better together? Surviving in the wild isn't easy. There are predators around every corner. You must be able to rely on your pack. Out here, it's eat or be eaten. There's no in between. Some animals are alphas, the leaders of their pack. Other animals are followers. Those support the alphas. There is conflict at every animal community, but some groups have more than others. The fierce mountain gorilla will fight to protect his group. The alpha wolf will bite and scratch to stay at the head of the pack. Each of these species battle for power. They have to, their lives or their pack depend on it. I'm gonna read these breakout little summaries because I always think they're so interesting. So fierce and fury and furry. During breeding season, male brown fur seals battle for territory, growling and honking. They charge each other. These beasts are willing to fight to the death. And then over, we'll learn about locking horns. Bighorn rams are famous for their head budding contest. They lock their 40 pounds or 18 kilogram horns with each other. They fight to determine each ram's place in the herd. Luckily, these animals have double layered skulls to protect them. Now let's read about the jungle. Western lowland gorillas are unique. They are very social. They live in groups called troops. During their lives, the, they, may have, they may move a few times. As a result, these gorillas must be able to adapt. The group that a gorilla is born into is called a natal troop. Once gorillas are old enough, they leave their troop for their home. For, they leave, well, I'm gonna try that whole sentence again. Once gorillas are old enough, they, they can leave their homes or they might stay in their natal troop. So Western lowland gorillas are critically in danger. Their numbers have declined in recent years. This means that the gorillas might become extinct. The nose knows, these are side details. Humans have unique patterns on their fingers. No two people have the same fingerprints. Gorillas have patterns on their fingers too, but they also have a unique nose print. That means no nose is the same. Growing up gorilla, as, baby, as babies, mountain gorillas depend on their mothers. They always stay close to their mothers. Baby gorillas eat, sleep, and travel with their mothers. Some ride on their mother's back until they are two or three years old. As gorillas grow up, they have to make a choice. Should they stay with their troops or should they leave? Some males choose to stay with their natal troops. They might replace the alpha male uh, when their troop, when the time comes. Now let's look about alpha females. Here below, these aren't like other apes. These alpha females lead their troop. Young females move to new groups and males stay in their natal troops close to their mothers. Other male gorillas choose to leave their natal troops. Some group, some join other groups with males and females. Some join troops made up of only young male gorillas. They are called a bachelor troop. Sometimes a gorilla will try to form his own troop. This can be dangerous. The, gor the gorilla may have to steal female gorillas from other troops. This means he will have to challenge the alpha. A jungle roar. When a gorilla battles, it is loud. They grunt, growl, bark, and roar. They beat their chest. 
Battles can happen within the troops. Battles can happen outside of the troop. In a guerrilla troop, the alpha is the most powerful. He controls the troop when he eats, sleeps, and travels. That's your intermission, our little gorilla assistant here. From troop to troop, female gorillas move from troop to troop too. Once a female is mature, she can stay with her natal troop or she just might join another. Females choose a new home by studying the troop's alpha. They want to know that they will have a place in the new group. They also want to be in a group that has a strong leader. Females choose the alphas with a lot of territory. They might join several troops during their lives. Here they say that bigger is is better. Battles are not always violent between gorillas. Sometimes they charge each other but won't touch. Alphas can earn the top spot in the troop just by being the biggest. Now, let's learn, move on to a dog eat dog world. Gray wolves are the largest canine species. They are also known as timber wolves. These fierce creatures are pack animals and they that travel, eat, sleep, and hunt together. Packs usually have six to eight wolves but some packs are much bigger. They can have up to two dozen wolves. Most of these packs are families. The members of the pack are the offspring of the alpha male and the alpha female. These two wolves are the dominant members of the pack. They guide all pack behavior. Now let's talk about protective pups. Pups or baby wolves are treasured by the entire wolf pack. They are looked after by all the wolves in their group. When they're very young, they are protected in their dens. When the wolves talk to each other, they howl or yelp or whine. The sound of the wolves howl can be heard for miles. A howl can mean many different things. Wolves howl to keep track of each other, to let the pack know when they have found food. Wolves also communicate with their body. When a wolf cha challenges another wolf, it will raise its hackles and growl. Alpha wolves also use this behavior to show their rank in the pack. Submissive wolves show their rank by lying on the ground and pawing at the alpha. So let's stop for a second so you can see my very own wolf. Thank you so much for my wolf pack. Now let's talk about, learn about telling tales. You can tell a lot about a canine by its tail. When a wolf is approaching a dominant member of its pack, its tail and body stays low. However, the dominant wolf walks tall and keeps its tail high. Wolves use different teeth for different tasks. When taking down its prey, they use their canine teeth. When eating, they use their front incisor teeth to tear away small parts. Back teeth are used to crush bone and eat marrow. Gross. Now let's talk about mealtime manners for these fellas and ladies. While it may not appear so from the outside, wolves follow rules during mealtime. Once prey has been taught, wolves dine in a certain order. The alpha pair gets the first choice. Once they have eaten, lower ranking wolves will have a chance to feed. Once the rest of the pack has been eaten, the lower members take their turn. These wolves are usually the youngest in the pack. Wolves don't always succeed at catching their prey. Sometimes they go more than a week without eating. Wolves can eat up to 20 pounds or nine kilograms of meat at once and, make up, and then make up for periods without food. After that, they can rest for a few days before hunting again. Let's talk about their roaming afar and wide. Wolf packs have large territories. These hunting territories can be as large as 1,200 miles, which is 3,108 square kilometers. That is as big 
as the island of Samoa. Next alpha animal we're gonna learn about is one about running the roost. Have any ideas? It might not look like it, but chickens can be tough. These birds aren't afraid to fight for what they want. Chickens peck each other to set their rank in the flock. Sometimes this pecking can turn deadly. Usually rank is set quickly. If there is a rooster in the flock, he becomes the alpha. If the flock has two roosters, they will compete for the top spot. If there are no roosters, one hen will peck her way to the alpha position. Stronger and healthier chickens are ranked higher than weak and sickly birds. Now let's take a look at our own little rooster. Thank you so much. Let's learn a little bit more about these feathery friends. Hens have friends, just like people. They stay close to each other during the day. According to some chicken owners, if a hen's best friend leaves, the hen will stay where she last saw her friends. Now, roosters versus humans. Roosters have hens, or roosters and hens see humans as their alpha. Well, they usually do. Sometimes roosters try to dominate humans. Watch out for that beak. Pecking and squawking. The problems arise when new chickens are introduced to a flock. Pecking starts again and all chickens must fight to keep their rank. Sometimes chickens will gang up on one hen and peck her repeatedly. This hen must be taken away from the group in order to survive. Otherwise, the flock might peck her to death. If a hen is killed, the other chickens might eat her. Gross. Chickens are vocal. They cluck and they squawk to communicate. The alpha rooster or hen calls to let the flock know about food or danger. Alphas have an important role. They look out for the rest of their flock. Now let's talk about proud mamas. When hens lay their eggs, they announce it with clucks and calls. They want the world to know this is another example of how chickens communicate. And now let's look deeper into bird brains. Chickens are very intelligent creatures. They are thought to be as smart as toddlers. Chickens can even learn a variety of tricks. Now the hen house. Chickens need room to move around and flap their wings. Often chickens are kept in small spaces. These spaces become very overcrowded. As a result, the chickens might become more violent. Pecking happens more often in small spaces. In part, this is because there is less bonding between the chickens. It is hard to create a bond with hundreds of other chickens around. Animals need space to live and to grow. This space should be clean and comfortable. There are many farms that have free range chickens. This means that the chickens are able to roam outside. They can exercise and explore. Now let's learn about the egg laying machines. Hens can start laying eggs when they are around six months old. Hens lay eggs during the summer in the wild. On farms, chicken lay eggs all year round. One hen can lay as many, of, as, many as 300 eggs in a year. That's so many eggs. Free range chickens are, res so responsible farms provide lots of space for their chickens to roam. Free range chickens spend their lives outside. They have room to perch, fly, and take dust baths. Now, let's learn about being stronger together. Being a part of an animal group is not easy. Whether it's a troop, pack, or flock, the struggle to survive is real. Each member of the group has duties. The alpha must prove their strength to protect the group. The rest must follow the alpha's lead or risk a fight. Animal groups provide safety. There is a better chance of survival when the animals are together. They look out for one another. When danger is close, they warn one another. When food is found, they celebrate together. It is a struggle, but it is worth it. So a couple more things. Some dolphins, this is the little bubble that you'll see on your screen. Some dolphins show aggression in unique ways. They chase one another and slap their tails on the water. They also blow bubbles from their blowholes. 
And the last breakout here is we have the king of the kangaroos. In kangaroo groups, usually one male becomes the alpha. He is the biggest and strongest of the bunch. He bites, he kicks, and he boxes his rivals. So let's take a look at my very own kangaroo. She jumps, she boxes, she kicks, and she's very strong. Thank you, kangaroo. So thank you for listening about my alpha animal story. I'm gonna show a couple other screens here in case your teachers or you wanna pause it so that you can see a few extra things. Um, check it out our additional books if you wanna learn more about pack animals and alpha animals. Here's an activity that you can try. You might've heard of family trees, but what if you had a wolf family tree? Most wolf packs are family groups. Can you create a chart of an imaginary wolf family? Can you show the connections between the different members of the pack? How many wolves are in that pack? How are they related? Who is the alpha? What is the wolf's role in that pack? What are the roles of the other wolves? Are there any rivals in the pack? Write a story about your wolf pack formulating. And here's some questions if you wanna dig a little deeper and about our amazing author. If you wanna see additional questions about this, can you tell me what are the different ways that wolves communicate? Remember, I had my little howler over here. How does a gorilla establish itself as the alpha of a troop? What role does the alpha play in a flock of chickens? And how do bighorn rams establish their dominance? Now I'm gonna scroll through these extra pages. Teachers and parents, feel free to stop and read through these different activities that you can do connected with this story. This is the lesson plan that goes along that allows you to do one day, five days, some quick different activities for each and every one of these, this story. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope you're having a wonderful day and you keep reading. This is Deanne Mendoza and I read this to you from California. I hope that you're having a safe and wonderful day.